coming in, in, in this particular cap. All right. We are going to be moving on to shards. Guys, game three starting in just a few seconds. In the frigid expanse of the North Atlantic, between Iceland and Scandinavia, lie the Faroe Islands. Beautiful and isolated, these windswept shores will shortly be the setting of a desperate struggle between opposing navies. This is Shards. Shards is a 42 by 42 kilometer domination style map with three cap points running in a line from southwest to northeast. The A cap is in the bottom left, B is in the center, and C is in the top right. Changes made to Shards in update 0.8.1 have made it a very unpopular map in some regions, and many teams remain uncomfortable playing on it. In the lower left and upper right corners of the map, the A and C caps pose quandaries for both teams. Half of each cap circle is wide open, while the other half is constricted by islands that form a narrow set of channels. How they choose to handle these corner caps forms the backbone of a team's strategy for dealing with Shards. Some teams will opt to try and capture from the side most open to them, forcing the enemy to attack through the channels. Others will opt to push through the channels quickly and bag the cap themselves, then use the open side of the cap for defense. At the center of all this chaos lies Cap B with its own maddening configuration. Islands punctuate the circular cap like a set of lawnmower blades, centered around another low-topped island smack in the middle of the cap. The island cover seems likely to encourage a lot of camping cruisers and hide-and-seek destroyers. Previous events in clan battle seasons have shown us that while teams spawn in the northwest and southeast, play will typically revolve around an axis that runs from the C cap in the northeast corner down to the A cap in the southwest, while both teams vie for control of capture area B. 18 ships, two teams, one victor. It's time to play Shards. Ladies and gentlemen, the hats are on. That's right. Because take a look at this <laughs> setup. Kremlin, Kremlin, Moskva, Stalingrad, 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 Smolensk, Smolensk. Wow. Computer serves the Soviet Union, Zaf. They do indeed. We, they need to, we need to go back. We need that rush. We need, we need it to be rush B again. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. I don't think I would. I don't think 07 was expecting this composition to, to show up at this point of the match. And uh, well, it has. They I mean, have not really made any changes from the last game that I can see. So they have a huge uphill uphill battle now. Starting, They start this match upside down on health, team health, by about 150,000 HP. Yeah, and you know what? If you're cuter, you're up two games, you can afford to play around a little bit, do Absolutely. something totally different, catch the opponent completely off guard. Absolutely. If you've got this, if you've got the room to play, you might as well use it, right? And, and essentially, like we saw, we saw KSC run a very similar team composition in some of their earlier games back in the group stage. That would be the Iron Curtain play. Exactly, Correct. the Iron Curtain. And uh, and it worked brilliantly. They, they knocked off Star Brasil Veracruz in back-to-back -back games. Yep. And uh, here we see Cuter making uh, basically the same play. Well, 07, essentially with their team composition, they have to flex that destroyer advantage to try and get an early lead because the best that they can... I mean, if you're 07, what you have to be doing, you have, you have to make good use of your torpedoes. The torpedoes of your destroyers are the big equalizers here. But right. when you've got this much radar on the other team, you have got to be making sure that you, you've got to be very, very frosty. You've got to be looking for hard cover. You cannot be caught in the open. And, you know, you need to bag these this cap advantage as quick as you can. I just want to point out something kind of interesting. So, Potato 69, you were talking about torpedoes being such an important factor mm -hmm. here. Potato 69 dropped one set of torpedoes down the middle. Yep behind Carrier Hosho, and I think that he expects those to either be spotted or possibly catch somebody off guard because he hasn't fired his other rack yet. He's backing in a yep. C-cap now. He's got two racks. He's got two more. Yes. yes. As we see him firing him out right now. Yep. And I think, I think that that was the idea was, oh, see, now it triggers the radar, and I think that it, it was trying to get um, Cuter to think that there were not torpedoes coming, uh, you know, in the other direction there. We'll see if that works out, but that's that's an interesting kind of big brain play that we're seeing here. Yep. 07 trying to do certain tricks to, uh, you know, anything they can, really. Well, they do manage to bait a radar out from Hosho. Potato moving uh, moving away from the cap. But, I mean, if, you know, if you're, if other thing about, about if you're cuter, you just, you know going into this match that you are not going to start this game with a lead. No. You're going to give up a lot of points on caps very early. Yep. Um, so you have to just you have to just play patiently and flex your muscles because you have so much health. Look at the mini map for a second, guys. We see the Iron Curtain being set up mm -hmm. already, and we see O7 being set to kite away because that's essentially the really only counter 
to Iron Curtain. The other big one is you have to win one side. Notice how 07 is starting to flex more of their ships over towards Charlie, saying that that's got to be the side that that we win. Uh, Smolensk, Summers setting up to kite away. That Kremlin, Moscow also being set to, to kite. They have to win one of these flanks if they're going to uh, to win this match. They, they do indeed. Potato back into C, M373's radar on him just as quickly. Kremlin shells coming in, Smolensk shells coming in. Potato takes a decent hit, but not a catastrophic one there as the Smolensk starts trying to farm him. Let's take a look at their view. They can still see him. Yep, they've got him radared. You know, and if you're if you're cuter, you know that those destroy. Like if if you if you can wipe out the 07 destroyers as quickly as you did in game two, this is this is it would be almost impossible for 07 to come back. Yep, Ash and Wolf coming under fire now. He's under uh, radar from Congo Pride in the Stalingrad. PNG is going to land one torp here on. I'm sorry, that's uh, Potato going to land one torp on PNG up here, up at sea. Yeah, it didn't really do much. No, it didn't. But I mean, hey, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be looking for those victories where you can get them, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. They are going to drive Congo Pride Stalingrad into the cap. This might be a bit. I don't know if it seems. It feels a bit early for this. Well, yeah. So looking at Cuter's uh, deployments, you know, we need to get Prince uh, Cruiser Prince Eugen. Up, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, that's I have brain delay in the Stalingrad. He's got to get pushed up quickly so that uh, it's not just Congo Pride being farmed. Yep. Brain delay now. And brain delay might actually be able to catch. Who is that in the in the, in the small and smoke? That's Princess. He Dolphin does catch Princess. Princess with a radar. I don't think they knew he was there. Nope. They certainly know now, but he's actually firing HE at Ashen Wolf. Beaver Hunter taking a huge hit up on the. Uh, the sea line or so. Ashen Wolf just getting hammered here as they're continuing to farm Ooh. Congo down. He's under 30,000 HP. Congo just took a torp or two, look like. Looks like it looks like it was a decent torpedo salvo there. He must have taken a hit from something. He's not flooding though. Admiral PNG now taking more torpedoes. He's at about half health. If he took a torp, did he, uh, did he take a flood? No he flooding. Take a flood. No flooding. No. Potato doing great work staggering these torpedo launches, trying to land that big flood on PNG. Hasn't managed it yet. Six and a half minutes gone. 07 working on about a 180 point lead here on the strength of that early cap advantage from B, but very, very upside down in health. They are trading well. They have narrowed the gap. The ups, you know, they started down about 150,000 points of health. They have narrowed the gap somewhat. But now, um, got to keep at it. Lots more work to do. A big key to. The success of the Iron Curtain play is rotating ships that are that are damaged. You can see that with Congo. They've he's, done that with Congo. He's been pushed back again, but we haven't seen that happen with PNG just yet. And I think PNG really needs to back out yep. here. PNG's about to take more torpedoes. Yep. 07 really needs one of these to get a flood. They do get a flood. That is a flood. And he is he repaired it right away. There are more oh. torpedoes inbound. Ooh, another big hit on Beaver Hunter. PNG is sailing into at least one more torpedo salvo. Uh, oh, there they are. I think it's going to pass on. It's going to just miss him to starboard. Yeah, they didn't get that one. And the Shimakaze torps crossing through the cap Oof. are too far forward. But they did get a fire to light on PNG. That one's going to stick for a while. Yes, it will. PNG is 07's win condition. He has to go down. They've got to kill him. They've got to keep pressure on him and get him off the board while they have the opportunity. Beaver Hunter set falling back now. Again, we talked about vision control. They've got to keep him from being spotted. Yep. He is not spotted at the moment. PNG surviving now, healing. Looks like he's healing it on fire. Yep. Is there radar right now for Potato 69 Summers? That's radar from Carrier Hosho. One of the Moskvas, who is this that's not good enough, has moved up and was putting good damage into Hosho as well. Ooh, big hit on PNG, down to 12k. 07 has to keep pressure on him. They're losing control of B now as Iris's Kremlin drives into the cap with shots on Dragon Shimakaze. Well, that's an interesting... Uh <laughs> we talked about the lawnmower. It's about to cut someone up, I think. It is. Well, and, and they do lose control of A as the, the Stalingrads and the Moskva push through there. 
Oh, PNG is turning, and he's going to turn into that torpedo salvo. That might seal the deal for him. Very well might. Let's see. It is going to... Yep, there he goes. First blood going to 07 here. That extends their lead out, but they're about to lose control of the B cap. Nope. Yeah, well, let's see. Where is... Let's have a look. Let's cheat. Let's use our little cheat buttons. <laughs> Where is Dragon? Okay, Dragon is going to let him have it. So Dragon is firing his guns. Looks like he's going to try and go for the reset on Iris. Slow him down some. Yep. He does. That works. But now we can see the Wall of Steel starting to get into the caps. 07 has nar significantly narrowed their health deficit down to about 80,000 hit points. Cut, they've cut it in half, but they are slowly but steadily losing board control here. Well, and that, that's how it works, right? Like, you, you have to kite away, you have to give up board control, you hope to win some trades, you hope yep. to take a ship or two down. Um, I think they're coming now, up with more ships than brain they delay. Hoped. I was fixed to say Brain Delay looked like he was on trouble, but they get not good enough. Uh, Cuter Bag's not good enough. Mm -hmm. His MOSFET going down, and, and Brain Delay was under a lot of threat as well, down to about 8 or 9, uh, looked about 8 or 9K last I saw him, but they don't have eyes on him anymore. Let's check his health. No, 13, he's at 13,000. Yep. Meanwhile, Cruiser Prince Eugen is just happily sitting in this uh, little smoke behind an island. Pew pewing Ashen Wolf. Ashen, I was going to say Ashen Wolf is down to about 4K. I'm not sure how they've got him spotted exactly. One of the Solomon's radar must have him. Uh, Congo Pride, possibly. Possibly. He's down now. We can't see him. 07 trading health well, but down, uh, pushed off all the caps because of the tremendous amount of firepower and health that uh, Cuter loaded in with. Yes. Uh, now, Iris just took, it looked like he just took a torpedo he salvo. Did. He flooded for a bit and then put it out. Potato 69 continued to put torpedoes down that slot. It looks like Iris is going to beach himself on this island or at least snuggle up next to it to try and prevent more of those torpedo salvos. And also to ensure he gets the cap. <laughs> yeah. If they can continue to reset him, I mean, that just delays the, Ooh. delays things. William the Dank just took a pretty big salvo. M373 is just sitting right on that edge of the sea oh, cap. Oh, William Whoa. Bag Shref in smoke. That's a huge kill up here at the top of the map. Wow. 07 up a ship again. William's still under threat from the Stalingrad to the south, but now it's just the double Stalingrads. 07 is, looks like they might win this critical sea flank you talked about earlier. And if they do, they can start to roll up on the Iron Curtain. That's their greatest weakness. William putting a shot down range on on, Cuter's, on uh, M373 Stalingrad, taking about half his remaining health away. 07 going is, up. 07 is playing this about as well as they can, given what they're up against. Yeah, it's important to note that uh, in this game, the destroyers are being a little bit more careful, and I think as a result, they're surviving through... Yes. And they're they're making their presence known. They don't have a another. choice. They have to be... They have to play more cautiously, and... Here we are, eight minutes remaining. 07 still on a lead. They've basically clawed back the health advantage. As there they, goes M373. They do bag M373 in the C cap. Potato 69 is finally going to bag a cap there. That's going to slow their ability, slow Cuter's ability to close the gap. And let's just take a look and appreciate Beaver Hunter's positioning here, firing over that island for free. Indeed. William under some threat now, 15k and falling as he burns, running north, trying to get shots on Iris in the B cap. Nope, he's switching his guns. Congo Pride going down. They do bag Congo Pride in the, in the A cap. 07 just playing very patient, very methodical, giving the ground they need to make up this health deficit. They're still upside down on health, but they have a three ship lead. And the point lead, too. Well, they have a points lead, but this can still turn south on them very quickly because they have a number of ships that are quite low. Like, Ashen Wolf can't afford to be spotted again. Correct. Um, William is under threat. Now, William's on 12, about 13K, and he can heal and get back into it. Looks like some focus fire going on Big Ben now. Cuter just, just playing this brilliantly, but, but 07 just trading punch for punch. They're not willing to stop. They're not willing to, to go home yet. Well, no reason they should if they can win the game. I mean, that's, you know, like they say, that's like why they play the games, right? Mm-hmm. You never give up. You never give up. Dolphin Princess took a pretty decent salvo from Iris up the butt, and uh, I don't know if he's spotted right now. Nope. Bra brain Delay, Blakey, just, just playing a brilliant Stalingrad game down here. 
working this island cover as best he can, trying to stay alive, stay in the game. Healing under 10k, but only only BFK's Moskva able to really get shells on him. But Cuter can very quickly get back into this game with a couple of kills. I mean, they're not they're certainly not out of it. No. That must be Dragon now getting back onto B. Let's see. It is indeed Dragon back onto B as whichever Kremlin it was. Let's have a quick check. That's Iris's Kremlin. It pushed all the way through the B cap, left the cap. That allows Dragon to get in there and try and flip it back. Yep. Uh, radar went up immediately by yep. Unlimited Chromosome, and we've got a Carrier Hosho with some side shots coming in right yeah. now to Dragon. They actually missed Dragon. They failed to reset him. A Stalingrad missed a Salvo. Well, Dragon pulled the handbrake, and the Salvo, the Salvo overshot him. Yep. Well, you called it, Zath. The C flank was where 07 had to win. They had to win that flank, and they did. And now they're swinging around. Excuse me, swinging around. Continuing to put pressure on Carrier Hosho Stalingrad. As Dragon bags B, and they start to grow their points lead. With five minutes to play. Yep, and uh, interesting seeing... Uh, Dragon now coming out of B cap. He survived the lawnmower blade. Maybe. Well, Unlimited's driving the Moskva <laughs> in right behind him. He really can't afford to stay. He's not spotted. So. Well, he's not, but I mean, we can see. We can see he doesn't, let's see. He doesn't know Unlimited's coming into that cap. He has no idea. Right. But he's going to know. He's going to know. He's going to suspect oh. something. They do finally bag Carrier Hosho. Look at that cross torp action. But now they know there's somebody on the B cap. Dragon accelerating quickly away. Now, if you're Dragon, I almost think you have to consider YOLO torping the Kremlin. What do you think? Uh, you could. However, Ashen Wolf just fired a Torp Salvo, so that no longer is an option. And that's true. You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that will end badly for somebody. It looked like he was about to, and then I think on comms he said, nope. Nope, don't do that. Dragon might still lose his ship here. He's part, sitting here on the B-cap. He doesn't know where is the, where is the, where is the, the Moskva. The Moskva stopped. Unlimited stopped on the bottom end of the cap. I kind of expected him to keep pushing, but he didn't. Yep, that's going to give uh, enough time for that Shimakaze to get out of Cuter, Dodge. Cuter has no vision right now. They cannot see any 07 ships. That's one of the disadvantages of this composition. You mean and, all that radar means they can't see things? Well, all that radar means they can see things when they push the button, but when they don't have the button, they can't. Iris is going out. Mm. Two minutes on the timer for 07. All they have to do is survive, and they'll win on the strength of their C cap. What a come around. Chromosome might yet take a Shimakaze Torp. Looks like he's going to just barely get ahead of one. Yep, he's going to sneak out of the way. And Big Ben might uh, um, go Ooh, out here. Big Ben, 4K. very, very low. That's points that Cuter desperately needs. Let's see if they can get him. 2K and falling. More shells coming in. They lose sight of him. Does it matter? Let's it cheat. does. They can't see him. No, he burns to death. They wow. land a fire at just the right time. Time extension. That's a big one for Cuter. They needed those points. Chromosome now sailing into a Shimakaze torpedo salvo at point blank range. He eats two in the bow. Ashen Wolf down to 21 hit points. Got himself in trouble again. He opened up his guns at the end thinking that was it. Chromosome now radaring, looking for Dragon. Does have him lit. But Chromosome is on 7,000 HP. He's got a some he's got summer shells falling on him. Dragon Shimakaze guns are doing work. We called it earlier, Zath. 07 yep. had to make their destroyers. They had to get good work out of their destroyers, and they have. And there goes there goes Chromosome. Only two surviving cuter ships on the board. Excuse me. <laughs> Only one. And that's the game, Zath. That is the game. We have a game four. We have a game four. 07 backs to the wall. Manages to stay alive once again.